When I first heard about this idea of a centralized state object, my initial reaction was it doesn't sound very modular, too much like global variables, which are bad, right? However, in a rich and dynamic web application, there can be a lot of dependencies between components. Clicking a checkbox could change behavior in many places. Running a query or changing a filter option may require resetting the state of other components. Having a global state where every component is only dependent on that state eliminates these dependencies between components. So imagine a complex machine like a nuclear power plant. If a technician turning a single valve somewhere requires that cascading things happen in other places in the plant, you wouldn't want that valve to have direct connections to all those other components. A better solution is to have every device connect to a central control panel from where it would send events and receive data. Global state is like a central control panel, which makes sense for a system where there is a lot of coordination between components. You want to be able to think about your application as a cohesive single entity, but keep the design of each component as simple as possible. A well-designed global state object facilitates that. The state is a kind of minimal representation of the whole application, and each component draws itself based on typically a subset of the data in that state. This also simplifies making changes and adding new features over time. Let's say you have an email application with a header component at the top and the list of emails below. When the user opens an email, it replaces the email list with the email reading pane. You later decide that the header component should completely disappear when an email is opened to make more room. If the state contains a Boolean flag indicating that the reading pane is open or not, the header can simply toggle its visibility based on that flag. If you later want the header to instead stay visible but be smaller with less data shown, you only have to change how the header component reacts to that flag. So imagine over time that the look of the header eventually depends on three to four other factors you know, with many variations. You could put logic in the header component that reads all those factors from the state and decides how to look. But if this becomes too ugly because the header has to know too much about other component behavior, you could add a new single enum value to the state that the header reads, making the logic in the header that decides how to look much more straightforward. The logic that examines all those other factors to decide how to set that new enum value would move somewhere else. Solid provides an API that allows you to write code that automatically updates a state value that is dependent on other state values. You'll see an example of that later. And of course, any component can have access to the mechanisms that update the state. So a lowly menu item can change the look or behavior of the whole application without having any knowledge of those other components. In practice, not every trivial component will have access to the state directly. A button that's part of a larger component, for example, would first trigger an event handler that's internal to that component that would optionally perform validation or other necessary logic, and that larger component could then update the state. But those details are totally up to you. In theory, you can think of your application as having a single state that describes the current UI, but in practice, having more than one actual state object probably makes sense. So state objects are just JavaScript objects, so they can be deeply nested and structured in any way. You can see that having a single state object with three arrays is not very different from having three state objects with an array in each. You have to decide what makes sense for your application. For a work project, I created a component that appears multiple times on the page, with each showing different data. It worked well for each component to have its own state object. To support changing color themes through the whole application, I created a single setting state object with the various color values. Each component has access to its specific state object and the global setting state object. This worked well. There are cases when a component should internally manage its own small state object when updating that state is completely internal to the component. For example, you could have an internal state that's used to change a button's color for a fraction of a second when it gets clicked. I'll show an example of this later. You have a lot of flexibility when architecting state objects. 
And all I did in my application was to encapsulate the state object in a class with helper methods for updating it. An instance of that class was passed to components that required access to the state. And I found it was easy to change state object design as the project evolved. So Solid is described as a fine-grained reactive library. I'll link an article in the description called Exploring the State of Reactivity Patterns in 2020 that compares reactivity between some popular frameworks and Solid. So what is a fine-grained reactive library? Reactivity is the idea that changes to the state are automatically reacted to by re-rendering the associated parts of the UI. If a to-do item is renamed, the text associated with that to-do is changed in the state, triggering the associated text on the web page to immediately change. If the text is shown more than once, for example, in a main list and in a detailed edit form, it'll change in both places. So fine-grained means minimum UI updates are done to reflect the state changes. For example, changing a single value in the state associated with a chart component only triggers, triggers a single DOM text node update. A framework like Solid allows you to focus on the code that you have to write, not the tedious plumbing. Just talking about the UI, you still must design the code, I mean, and design and code the state objects and the logic that reacts to updates and user events by updating the state and the components that create the UI from that state. But you can't avoid those parts since that's what makes your application what it is, how it looks and how it interacts with the user. Solid also makes it easy to write those parts that you can't avoid.